Good day. I'm going to be presenting to you on the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, which is a system to strengthen national and, rabies and regional rabies surveillance. So I'm Dr. Terence Scott from the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, and I'm the technical lead for rabies. I'm also a developer and administrator of the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin. So why is rabies still an issue? Well, we know that it has a high case fatality rate, one of the highest among all neglected tropical diseases. And therefore, we assume that this should then be a priority disease. We know that it is 100% preventable, and there is an effective dog vaccine as well as effective human prophylaxis. And in addition to all of this, it has been proven to be feasible. And we see this in, in, in examples, not only in the developed world, but in the developing world too, such as in Mexico, where as there is an increase in the number of dogs that are being vaccinated, there is a decrease in the number of animal and human rabies cases. And some of such examples are available throughout the developing world. Another example, such as Sri Lanka. So then why is rabies still an issue? Well, it comes down to the cycle of neglect, where there is weak surveillance, and because there is weak surveillance, there is a lack of data for decision makers to make a decision on prioritizing this disease. Because there is this low priority, they do not allocate funds and resources to the disease, and therefore rabies remains under-resourced. Because it is under-resourced, there is again weak surveillance and a lack of effective intervention efforts. And the cycle then continues. So how do we break the cycle of, of neglect? We can break it through good surveillance. And we know that surveillance is critical to all rabies elimination activities. And it's used to understand the disease dynamics, knowing where the disease is, knowing where hotspots are, to track and monitor progress, to make sure that our interventions are effective to forecast vaccine requirements, knowing where those hotspots are and ensuring that we deliver vaccines, both human and animal vaccines, to those areas. And we can then also then use this information to support the case for elimination, making sure that people who are making the decisions are making informed decisions based on the evidence that is gathered. And we can use this evidence to demonstrate progress and success, showing that the, the money and the resources that have gone into these intervention efforts are being used effectively and then declare freedom from the disease through this evidence base. And if you don't believe that surveillance is absolutely critical, we can learn from uh, other diseases that have been eradicated, such as smallpox, where in this quote, it's described that surveillance has proved to be the ultimate quality control measure, the guide to improved operations and the yardstick of progress. And this is a quote from 1987, but we see the same effects today, the importance of surveillance for rabies control too. But how can we go about improving rabies surveillance? And this is where the Global Alliance for Rabies Control developed the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin as a dedicated One Health rabies surveillance system. And we've seen that national governments and other organizations often have very effective surveillance systems for multiple different diseases. And rabies is included into those surveillance systems. But unfortunately, the number of indicators and the, the amount of data that is gathered through those um, integrated surveillance, national surveillance systems, is typically not sufficient to make informed, detailed decisions about rabies control and elimination. So we've developed this system to specifically cater for the various different indicators and aspects of rabies surveillance that are required to make those informed decisions. Importantly, the, epidem the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin is freely available and um, it covers surveillance on all different levels, from the national level right down to the community for that high resolution surveillance, but also at the international level for advocacy purposes. The system is based on DHIS2, which is widely used um, throughout endemic, rabies endemic countries as a national surveillance platform already. So looking at an overview of how the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin works, 
it collects data right at, at the bottom of the screen there at the subnational data collection, collecting data in facilities and laboratories from community health workers that are working on the ground and vaccinators that are working directly on the ground. And it aggregates this data up to the national level for national level reporting in the various different ministries that are involved in regulatory control and elimination. That is then further aggregated up to the regional level where we can use this information for regional approaches um, to inform stakeholders and gain international awareness and support, especially through public information. And furthermore, uh, last uh, but not least, it can be used for international reporting also. However, I'd like to clarify that the epidemiological bulletin is not a reporting system, but rather a surveillance system. It's not designed to collect data for international organizations and external stakeholders, but it's used as a surveillance system for the national level government. So this system is a comprehensive rabies surveillance system with an integrated intersectoral data sharing, which means that the data is shared among all the relevant stakeholders at the national level immediately and fluidly. Importantly, it's government owned and driven, and it is based on international indicators that are, are requested from the IE and WHO, and also ensuring that the governments are collecting the correct data, the most pertinent data for rabies elimination. And this then facilitates accurate data reporting. But I'd like to reiterate that this is a government owned and driven system. Although it has been developed by the Global Alliance for Rabies Control, we have no access to that data and cannot use it without express permission from the governments themselves. And therefore it is a system for the national governments to use for their own purposes. So the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin is broken down into uh, various different components and we're going to look at those in a little bit more detail. So the first is reiterating that point that it is an integrated one health surveillance system designed for data sharing among sectors. So it's built on real-time data sharing between for, in, for instance, the health and animal health sectors, where reports, graphs, and maps use data from both sectors. So in this example on the map on the left, you can see that there's a yellow dot, and that indicates the human rabies cases, while the red and blue dots indicate various different animal rabies cases in different species. And you can then see that both the human and the animal data is overlain on the same visual and is then available to both sectors, not only being limited to the animal health sector or to the human health sector, but both sectors are available to see and use this information correctly. However, it's not an open system for all to see, and there are careful restricted rights for various different users to ensure that confidential information, such as patient information, is not shared with people who are, who are not authorized to then view that information. The next component is the rabies vaccination tracker component, and this is designed specifically to track mass dog vaccination campaigns, where each and every animal um, that is vaccinated is tracked using this um, component. Maps are automatically created and updated using this, this system so that there's no need for a GIS expert to create your maps. Uh, the maps and visuals are updated and created in real time to enable real time campaign monitoring and feedback down back, back down to the field to show your vaccinators who are working hard in the field the impact that they've made and where they have vaccinated. This um, component is available through a separate mobile application um, and it is also compatible with the GARC data logger, which is a custom device that, have, that we've developed to specifically track mass dog vaccination campaigns. So you can see some outputs from, from this component uh, includes uh, maps showing the aggregated data from, for in this example, a fixed point vaccination campaign. We can also look at vaccination coverage over different areas or within specific provinces or districts. Um, and you can then also have graphs and maps that are updated with um, the number of vaccinations per um, region or district 
or the number of vaccinations per, uh, per time. And all of these maps, graphs, visuals are all updated in real time as the data comes in. They're updated automatically, so once the system is set up for your country, it all runs in the background, and as you add the information, the information is then updated. So the next component is the rabies treatment tracker component, specifically designed to, treat, to track uh, patients coming into health facilities uh, on suspicion of rabies exposures. And this component also tracks post-exposure prophylaxis users, not usage, not only the vaccination, but also rabies immunoglobulin, whether the wounds have been washed at home or within the clinic, the education levels, and also then sending notifications to patients to come back to a health facility <coughs> um, upon the next scheduled visit. So these are automated alerts that can go out to the patients. They can, there's information um, informing the doctors and health professionals who are treating the patients on um, the risk assessments and the potential routes for, for treatment. And this component also helps to identify high-risk areas for rabies exposures because it can plot this information on maps to identify where patients are coming from and where bike cases are occurring the most. Um, the visuals from, from this component are similar to the others where you have maps and graphs that are again automatically updated with the information, but importantly none of the confidential patient information is shared uh, with those who should not have access to that. So the only visuals that would be shared among different sectors would be graphs with, without any confidential information on, but with the critical information that can then lead to appropriate interventions. The next component is the rabies case surveillance component, which facilitates the mapping and analysis of laboratory diagnosed cases. So as the cases come into the laboratory and they diagnose them, the results go out and that is then entered into the system. And as those results are entered, once again, the maps and visuals and graphs are automatically updated uh, in real time to, make, to alert people of the different cases that have been diagnosed in the area. Um, this is extremely important for identifying rabies hotspots. And as I mentioned previously, this information can be overlain with other information. So for instance, you can overlay the information from the rabies case surveillance components where there are the positive and negative cases that have been identified and diagnosed uh, with those of the, the tracked vaccinations of, of animals in the community. So you can look at hotspots, identify the hotspots, vaccinate in the area, look at those visuals overlaying over one another and determine whether there have been any areas that have been missed or whether you see a decrease in the number of cases from those areas based on the vaccination intervention. Importantly, this uh, component can also be used for accurate record keeping because it does track the, the laboratory number of each of the different cases and you can then identify where um, specific laboratory numbers have come from and records are stored. Lastly, there's the integrated bike case management component, which is um, called the community-based rabies surveillance components. And this is a comprehensive integrated bite case management program designed to track the a suspect animal from the community uh, and link it directly with uh, any exposed humans that may have been exposed to this rabbit animal, um, tracking it all the way to the laboratory for diagnosis, alternatively tracking that animal into quarantine and through the quarantine process, and, and at each level, there are automated alerts that are sent out to the relevant authorities for appropriate action. As an example, as soon as the suspect animals um, has been diagnosed in the laboratory, and if it's a positive diagnosis, an alert will be sent out to the veterinary team, first of all, to inform that them, them that there was a positive case in, a, in that area, and they should then go out and intervene through mass vaccination and another alert will be sent to the medical professionals who are treating the patient in the clinic to inform them that this was a positive animal and that they should ensure that the patient returns for treatment. So this is extremely important for active rabies surveillance within the community and driven by the community. It also has a negative reporting component, 
which is extremely important to to showcase um, whether uh, and demonstrate freedom from rabies in a specific area. So if you want to prove that your, the area is free from rabies surveillance, you need to have this active surveillance where people are looking for cases and yet they are reporting that they are not identifying any cases even though they are actively looking for this information. Importantly, once again, this component specifically links all the different sectors and components together, um, bringing together the human and animal health in a single different in a single component. So, as an overview, the the rabies epidemiological bulletin is made up of these various different components, addressing all the important needs of rabies surveillance that are required to drive accurate interventions and effective interventions, and ensure that. Um, policymakers are made aware of the situation and that you can then use the data in an, in an effective way to advocate for, for rabies elimination. <clears throat> so it is a comprehensive, One Health, rabies-specific integrated surveillance system. Now, I've told you about this tool, but does it really work? Is it really effective? Well, it was launched in 2016 and currently it is being used by all 46 African countries within the Pan-African Rabies Control Network. And of those 46 countries, more than 70% of those countries use it routinely and the remainder use it on an annual basis. Um, we also launched it recently in the Asian uh, networks, so the Aricon network, and also in the Middle East, the Miracon network, and we're hoping to expand it uh, further within those networks in the coming years. Importantly, it's open source software, which means that it's compatible with various other softwares, and it is also freely available to anyone who is interested in using it. So in summary, we know that data is essential for awareness and effective interventions, and we know that data is required to break that cycle of neglect. And how we can do this is we can use the tools that are available to you, such as the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, which is an all-inclusive One Health data platform. And we know that good data saves both human and animal lives. So, to reiterate why we need this data, we can make a statement with the information that we have available. We need data to tell people that one person dies every nine minutes from rabies, that it is 100% preventable, and that vaccinating 70% of the dog population can eliminate canine-mediated human rabies cases. So I'd like to thank you very much for your attention, and if you would like more information about the Rabies Epidemiological Bulletin, um, feel free to browse through our website at rabiesalliance.org, and you're also welcome to contact me. Thank you very much.